and it's it's really picked up at a pretty quick pace. And unfortunately, Texas is the single largest state for billion dollar losses in the entire United States. Um, so not only is the the marketplace for property difficult, but when we're in the Gulf Coast, we're hurricane exposed, and we're in Texas, which is the location where the most pain has been felt by insurance carriers. What, what our strategy is and how we've worked with the conference is the world of having a um, package quote from a dedicated market that um, likes the insurance risk of churches is really not guaranteed moving forward. And a lot of it has just completely gone away. And so what, what our strategy and, and where we can really gain some strength in the marketplace is instead of uh, relying on those package markets that want to write uh, churches and can offer property, we have to be able to go to the dedicated property marketplace to complement the liability coverages that those markets that are right liability coverages, your general liability, um, abuse coverage, um, auto insurance, those are stable. Those markets are fine. It's the property that's the, the main driver of problems. Well, as a individual church, when we go to the dedicated property market, we get severely punished in our, our terms, our pricing and our deductible structure. And we don't convey enough strength in the marketplace um, as a single church, really regardless of the size of the church. Um, we don't have that buying power and flexibility with how we could build a policy. And so, again, this is a document just to kind of give some clarity to really how bad the world of property insurance has been. I'm sure individually you may have seen this on your homeowners, right? The, the homeowners marketplace is seeing something very similar. Um, and really, as, as we kind of advance these conversations, for us, the framework of this is how do we build the structure that gives us the most buying power as a buyer of property insurance? And this process that we're working through and the data collection and everything a part of it is really a, a due diligence process for us to be able to build a hypothetical structure that the, the underwriting community supports that lowers all of the churches within the conferences uh, annual insurance spend. And so we'll work through some of that. Um, I think for us, instead of the detailed underwriting of kind of how the sausage is made, we really want to share today what we're working to accomplish, why the, the problems exist in the marketplace, and then what we believe are the easy ways for us to gain some more marketability for the placement of our insurance in the marketplace. Andre, you're on mute on your side. If, if you want to advance through. Yep, I got it. Um, I don't see anything in the chat. I'll go on on through. Um, I, I'll I'll take this one, and this dovetails with what uh, Braxton just said. Um, historically, we've been able to go to those niche church underwriters and get one policy for wind and hail and fire, which is all of your property uh, for the most part and liability from domestic United States-based uh, insurance carriers. That's not available. So we have to look to our second and third choices. Um, second choice would be to buy one policy for wind and hail. Uh, you might have to get some of that from the Texas wind pool, some from the London markets, uh, and there may be some availability in the US. Um, and then one fire and liability uh, policy from one of the niche carriers who, who still write fire in the package, but not wind or, or hail. Uh, probably more likely we'll end up with uh, uh, this third choice where we'll have one policy for the conference and all of the churches that participate that covers the property, the wind and hail and the fire, and, uh, and then a separate policy for the liabilities. And that wind and hail and fire is likely to be split combined by a number of underwriters, both uh, primarily in London, but uh, some still in the United States who'll be interested. 
And just to add a little bit of color to that for the group is the structures that we're talking about and, and how Andre's referenced these multiple underwriters and difference of um, you know, carriers for types of perils like for wind and for hail or fire. This is not a um, extremely unique idea. Um, this is really how most large property buyers in the commercial space, this is how they buy insurance to drive down the insurance cost. And so it's really just a framing of where an individual church was placed in what I would say is a, a simple placement with one carrier is moving this towards what a large buyer of property insurance would typically look to buy. Yes, and, and in this slide, we kind of show that where in this example, we may have 200 churches that uh, each have a, um, a million dollars worth of values. So you have $200 million in values. If you total up all of the property insurance policies that all of those churches carry, if you total up the limits of each of those policies, you're very likely to have something in the $200 million range, whereas we know from scientific modeling and experience and, and, and same type of scientific modeling that we will apply to the Texas Annual Conference group of properties, um, that it's very, very unlikely that all $200 million worth of those values are gonna be affected in a single occurrence or even a couple of occurrences. And so it's not gonna be necessary. And as Braxton said, the large property buyers who have property that are not all in a single location will, will buy a limit that can be shared, something less than 200 million that can be shared and used to cover claims at any of the properties that are in the group. And so um, that's what we're attempting to demonstrate here. You won't have to buy a full $200 million in this example. And then little hint down at the bottom, you might be able to handle a larger deductible as a group than any church might be able to handle on its own. And just some, a, a little bit of clarity around that as well is the simple way for us to think about that. Andre, if you would go back just one slide, um, just while we kind of talk through this, is what the underwriters know is that as they, as they are selling you property insurance is the, it's very unlikely that the entire limit of your individual policies is going to be exposed for a single occurrence, right? That a catastrophic fire, a tornado, a catastrophic hurricane are really the only chances for that type of a loss to happen. So when they, when they are charging you for that limit, sort of the top end of that limit they are, they're getting premium for it, but they're very unlikely to pay a claim at the top end of that policy. And so the modeling that these underwriters use and, and that science that Andre is mentioning, what we do is we do our own version of that with some independent modeling agencies and basically build our underwriting file. So then instead of letting the underwriter effectively charge us for limit that we don't need. We want to be able to know um, under you know, certain circumstances, very low probabilities of ever exceeding, what is the maximum limit that we would need to buy for the conference for one single loss? So I just want to make, make it clear that we're not talking about um, under insuring the entire schedule. This would still be coverage for all of the properties in the schedule, but we would be eliminating as much of that top end of the limit where the underwriters are getting premium, but very unlikely to pay a loss. And that's really how this program is looking to be built. And then the deductible side, really that's a, a, a game for us to play on financing, right? So whether we buy insurance or we don't, that doesn't change if a loss can happen. And so, insurance really just becomes a financing activity to figure out where the best trade of dollars are. And if, if the math shows that there's a significant return by increasing our deductible, that may be the right approach. But as we'll continue to walk through, 
as we as we gather the information is how this this theory of our strategy will get applied into an actual strategy and, and that's the reason for the participation and, and the request for information we want as much information as possible of all of the churches in the conference so we can we can have the best picture to build the best story in the market This, this slide is, uh, well, what you see to the right in slide number five appears to the left in slide number six. And this is just to show you that they talk about having one policy, one coverage for the conference, but in the background, there, there may be multiple and likely will be multiple insurance companies that are each taking a piece of the action. Um, on the first layer above the deductible, there may be four different insurance companies each taking a piece, a 25% or 30% and 10% uh, share of that layer. And then there may be other layers where one insurance company takes the full layer, perhaps a thin layer. And then we build up to the, to the loss limit that the catastrophe modeling that we're talking about suggests would be the appropriate limit to, to buy, uh, given the chances of um, uh, catastrophic events. Now, this is really property discussion that we've had in these last couple of slides. In the, in the liability um, the picture, most of your churches have been buying what is traditional insurance. Uh, you have a deductible and then you have insurance that covers you up to a million dollars or two million dollars. Maybe you have an umbrella that takes you to five million dollars, but it's traditional insurance. In the commercial insurance space today, there are insurance, there are corporations. And if you think of the Texas Annual Conference as a corporation with multiple profit and law centers, um, you, you might consider uh, the type of arrangements that we have kind of here in the middle, uh, group captive, risk retention, and group self-insurance. These are very, very common ways for large companies uh, to, to group themselves together. And these, are, these would be unrelated companies. They're like-minded, but unrelated businesses that want to control more of their costs, uh, not only by maybe getting a shared loss limit, but by sharing in some of the losses uh, below a certain threshold. And these three uh, types are, are all regulated. You have to have licenses, you have to have uh, auditors and accountants and lawyers, and you have to get the state uh, insurance commission to bless these things. They're cumber cumbersome, uh, but they're unnecessary for the Texas Annual Conference and any really Methodist conference because of the trust clause that puts insurable interest in the conference. The conference has insurable interest in all, all of the operations, all of the assets and the operations that affect the financial assets of the, of the churches. And so you know, a purchasing group, a Ritz purchasing group is uh, uh, another way for a group to, uh, to, uh, achieve group purchasing power, but this would involve individual policies for each individual church, uh, and um, everyone would get a discount for all buying in the same place. That's a possibility. That's one thing we'll explore. That's an arrangement we have with another conference, another Methodist conference in another state. Um, but what we think is going to work, and 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 as Braxton will, will tell you, you know, we, we have our aim on what we think will work, but as we go through this process in the marketplace, if there is another solution that's better suited for the, the Texas Annual Conference, we will identify it and we will present it as, as an option uh, to this. Um, traditional insurance companies, this is really, we're talking about traditional insurance policy that would be written to the conference. The conference would be the named insured or the first named insured on the policy. Each church would be uh, uh, separately named as insured, but the conference ultimately would have responsibility to the insurance company and have the relationship with the insurance company 
the individual churches would be insured on that policy. And as we talked about, you know, some, there's some optimum place for the churches as a group to share uh, risk before uh, the threshold above which insurance is going to be is going to be purchased. Braxton, you want to uh, add to that? Um, thanks, Andre. Yeah, I think the the simple way for us to think about the liability is these lines are not under the same strain and market conditions as the property. But that being said, is that as a larger buyer, we gain more purchase power and could maybe create uh, different strategies to more effectively lower our cost. The liability to me, the simplest way to think about it is just like what was talked about at the conference with regards to the electric, uh, electricity co-op, is that I as an individual church can go buy you know, and sign up for my electrical rates, but as a group, because we have scale, we, have, we are more attractive to lower my, my rates, right? And so that's really what we think about on the liability side is as a group, we have more buying power to help lower my price per unit, my rates uh, with regards to those insurances. Good. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, let's see, there's a couple of uh, questions here um, that I'll stop and take. Uh, is there no way to mute? Okay, we got through that. Are these slides available online later for viewing? Uh, yes, Will says they'll post them. Uh, thank you. Okay, good. Will already took care of that. Thank you, Will. Okay, so um, we are going to need a lot of information, and uh, we, we attempted to get into some detail on this last week, and I think we kind of got uh, lost in the haze. Um, most of you should have by now received from Will a set of Excel workbooks that contain the questionnaires, the application questionnaires. Yes, Will. If you have not received them, please send me an email. I'm going to put my email in the chat uh, and I will get them out to you. So these, these application workbooks contain the information that the underwriters are going to want in order to consider writing insurance for the conference. Um, uh, if you filled out an application for church insurance before, you know that their questionnaires are, are quite lengthy. Church Mutual, Brotherhood Mutual, um, um, Philadelphia all have lengthy questionnaires. What we've attempted to do, because we're going to be approaching multiple insurance companies on your behalf, is simplify this and get everything into one place, into one set of applications, one set of questions, uh, one set of data requests so that um, uh, we can compile them into one application for the conference, uh, one application for the underwriters to consider. And so um, uh, what we uh, are showing you here is that uh, we recognize that these are these are detailed. they're 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 lengthy, and some of them may be complex. We're going to be uh, hosting a series of webinars. We use the Microsoft Teams um, um, platform, uh, and we'll be getting some invites out. They'll be coming, uh, I guess. So, Will, let's just step out right now and, and see if we can uh, talk about this. Do you, do you want us to send the invite to you so that you can distribute it to the appropriate parties, or do you want to send us the email list and have us? direct those invites from our system. Uh, do we want to do a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting? Because if we do a Zoom meeting, we probably need to send it out from our end. Okay, well, we're happy to host. It's, it's, it's you know, we work for you. Tell it, you just tell us how you want to, how you want to do it. We, we just, will, we, we will need the email addresses of the people I, that. I, I've got those and I'm collecting some more now. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, then if you'll just share those with us, then I will, I will do so. Then, so the message then is that you will receive an invite from McGriff 
advising you that we'll be hosting these webinars. It'll give you the the the, the way to link in and uh, and get to these uh, uh, webinars. We will go through uh, an item at a time and answer questions about the details in in these individual uh, spreadsheets. Um, and as Braxton pointed out in an earlier conversation, you know, we haven't asked for your insurance policies. We are gonna need some information about those policies, uh, but it would be helpful if you can send those insurance policies because some of the information we'll need is gonna be on there. One of the critical uh, pieces of information that seems to be difficult to get in these processes is the claim information. Uh, we need to have the information about the claims that have happened that you have made for any of these insurance policies to your prior insurance companies. And you typically have to get that from your current insurance agent. And uh, and we'll talk about that in, in some more detail. Braxton? Yes, yeah, so I think um, we understand that this is a process that is going to require work and time and commitment. And I don't want it to sound that um, our group is just asking for information and, you know, please get it to us. So that's, as Andres pointed out, we are creating opportunities for us to help with the workbook. I think um, one thing that I hope everyone can appreciate is if you've dealt with insurance renewals before, you know there are underwriting questions. And what, what our group is working to do is take every every possible underwriting question for all of the churches in the conference and compile it into a nice neat package as best as possible so it is a lift you know we are grateful for the opportunity to work on it and we we look for um you know kind of guidance on how we can help commit uh complete that information um as andre mentioned a, a great place for us uh it just as we work to compile the information is copies of the policies that you have in force there is date there's data in those policies that'll help us we are working to build basically a overall comparison document at the conference level to say this is where we are as a conference and this is where we can go as a conference and so in a, in a, as part of this if you can provide, if we can work through these workbooks, we're happy to help. It, it's going to be make the process move as smooth as possible. Um, the policies will also be helpful as we compile data. Okay, I'm uh, I'm looking at the chat. Uh, we have a question. Yeah, I'll take. I'll, I'll, I'm looking at those two. I was typing up an answer and and I'll respond, um, but I'll, I'll grab these here. So. Um, we had a question come in, um, do, could churches exclude types of coverage? Um, and a specific example being workers' compensation, it's not required in the state of Texas. And so at this point in time, I think the best way for us to think about this is we have a lot of paths in front of us and it's, we are not um, guaranteeing like a force structure on anyone, right? I think, there's if we don't have workers comp payroll or a specific church would not like to participate in that, that is definitely an option to move forward with. Um, our goal is to build the biggest submission possible to get the best overall price for all lines of coverage for each church. Um, and then the, the other question that had come in was commitment level and locking ourselves in, right? And so I want to be very clear about this is the data that we're requesting and the process we're working on right now, as it stands today, there is not a Texas annual conference policy that you can join into right now. What our job is, what could that policy look like? Turn that into bindable terms and then present a viable option to each of the churches with appropriately allocated costs that we believe will be lower than each church's individual spend. But to, to the point of, does this lock me into a conference policy? Not in any way at this point in time, there isn't a conference policy that forces you into it. We're building a, we're building a, um, 
a vehicle to access the marketplace in a more effective way? Yeah, I'll add, so for workers' compensation in, in particular, um, some of the niche underwriters will include workers' compensation in the liability package, some will not. So it actually may, uh, it, you know, at the end of the deal, depending on which insurance company we go with, it may make sense for each church to continue to buy workers' compensation separately. And, and we will be able to assist the churches with that if, they're, if their current agents are not able to assist them. Uh, I would be interested in the reference, though, for uh, uh, workers' compensation not being required in Texas. I, I, I do understand for sole proprietors uh, it's not required, but I've not come across a reference and happy to learn something new where it's not required for churches in Texas. Uh, so if you if you have that reference, please, please send it along. And. Um, Let's see if we have any other. That, that's, those are the only questions we have in the in the chat right now, Will. Uh, and and that's really the end of our. Well, let's see. We have. Um, I'll just show you a list of the applications that we're gonna um, uh, be um, uh, that are included in the in the email in each of the workbooks. And our timeline, um, realistically, we think the earliest that we can have something like this together, uh, we're going to say is November 1. Could be earlier, depending on how quickly we can get enough information to make it work. But I think, you know, we have churches that are asking, well, my insurance renews before then. What should I do? Well, um, you should renew your insurance uh, and, and we can work on getting you into the into the group policy when when that happens. Uh, McGriff is available and we've already referred some churches whose renewals are coming up uh, internally. We have one group that handles a lot of small churches around the country. Uh, and But our team, Braxton's team, Gilbert's team and, and, and my team uh, are available to help with those if, if necessary. So just let us know. Um, but we are asking for the uh, workbooks to be returned uh, by July the 31st uh, so that we can uh, compile those. Uh, Gilbert, Braxton, and I are available. Um, I'll show you our contact information if you don't already have it to assist in that process. Um, you know, anytime you have a call or a question, just give us a call. Um, the webinars are, are not intended to be the only place where you can get help. Um, you can certainly call us and we'll, we will assist you. Um, we, uh, I should also say, and this um, uh, connects to the, the, the question that Braxton answered about commitment. You know, once we have a solution to present, we are gonna present it to the conference and with the conference blessing to all of the churches that participate. It's possible that some churches may decide they don't want to participate, uh, but an, enough want to participate that it makes sense to go forward. If that happens, then what we'll have to do is remove the information from those churches who have submitted information but decided not to participate and then resubmit, recalculate and, and represent to the churches that do want to go forward. So there's, you know, there's a good bit of effort between now and and then, uh, and a lot of things that have to happen before we get to uh, a decision point. And then once a decision point is passed to get to actually binding uh, and, and putting a policy in place. And that, that is the end of the, uh, the presentation, uh, Will, and uh, our information there is in, the, is in the bottom. Yeah, so let me share with the group what I have done with uh, the after the last webinar, um, everybody that reached out to me and asked for a copy of the uh, spreadsheets, I sent an email to. I also sent a link in that email to the um, uh, the webinar that we had last week. Uh, we will uh, save this webinar, though I realize I started it just a tad late, uh, and uh, these will also be posted on the website. Uh, but I will send an email to each of you uh, with the uh, spreadsheets. I will also 
uh, copy the person that is on the McGriff team that is uh, your district is assigned to. So you see here, Gilbert Talbot is doing the Northwest and the Northeast districts. Andre is doing the Southwest and Southeast districts and Braxton is doing the Metro district, uh, working with the churches in those districts. And so I will copy them on the email that I send to you. Uh, so that's, that's our plan going forward. Um, and um, again, if, if you have not gotten uh, a copy of the spreadsheets from me already, but would like those, please send me an email. Um, I know the chat is a wonderful way to, to do a lot of this, but an email will actually get it done probably more efficiently if you'll send me an email to wread at txcumc.org. And that email is up in the chat. I'll put it in again um, right here. Will, I also wanted to add, I just replied to Brandy Dudley in the chat. Um, her comment was, uh, her church's insurance is going to drop on the 27th of July. How fast can we get on board with with this insurance? So as Andre stated, our our overall goal is to have something in November. But for the meantime, uh, Brandy, I sent you my email address. If you can send me the name of your church and the expiring policy information, I'll go ahead and get you referred over to our client service center. That's been helping us with some of the other churches uh, for the time being, and um, somebody from there will reach out to you and and uh, be able to assist you with that for the short term. Thank you, Gilbert. Alan Van Hooser asked the question: How are valuations, policy limits set on buildings and property? That's a question for for you guys. <laughs> yeah, sure. And uh, I sent, uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, it was Alan, uh, just right before the meeting started, sent a, res a response. Uh, and then co-insurance was part of that that question. Um, so the, the, the churches uh, are expected to tell us what is the value of the property that you uh, want to insure. If you really don't have uh, any good idea uh, a local contractor should be able to help you uh, determine uh, what's the appropriate cost per square foot based on the construction of your building. Uh, we have some reference material for that um, and, uh, and, and, and can help you, but you're probably best uh, advised to ask a local contractor and they can give you a range. In this type of insurance arrangement, and we've done several of these, uh, coinsurance is, is, is often not even included. There's no, no coinsurance penalty, but the underwriters who write these types of policies, they will evaluate, uh, and they have sophisticated systems to do this, evaluate what, what the valuation is of the building that you're describing, the square footage. They'll determine what the cost per square foot is of the information that you have submitted they will, the system will look at the construction of the building and the location of the building, the part of the country that the building is in. And if they believe that it's undervalued, they will require or request, they will likely request um, that the building values be elevated or else they will impose co-insurance penalties on those locations. So my suggestion would be to, to get with a local contractor, get a good range of value that you can agree with and, and submit that. If we submit it to underwriters and they don't think it's a uh, high enough value, then um, they will let us know. But if a claim happens and they have accepted the values you submitted, the policies that we're trying to put in place are not gonna have a co-insurance policy. It's gonna pay to replace the buildings that have been uh, put on the schedule and accepted by underwriters. If that, uh, Alan, if you have anything else, if, if, yeah, I hope Alan, that answers your question. But... Yeah, Alan, if, let us know if that answers your question. So Okay. Um, and, I see, and I see Tom has sent me the, 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 the link. Thank you, Tom. Tom is always fast with that kind of stuff. <laughs> Good. Okay, Alan says yes, thank you. The, the other point to that, just to add, is, and, and this, 
this does get into the detail of insurance and, and we understand that um, you are not insurance professionals and, and we don't expect you to be. And, and that's our role um, in assisting the churches of the conference and, and the conference. Um, when we say things like you know, increase your building limits, it's easy to hear increase my building limits, my premium goes up, right? Because I, I, that's a factor that some of you may have dealt with in your previous renewals or dealing with right now. Those are the types of things when we have a large portfolio together, as long as I, I, my whole focus is what is my rate, my price per unit? And so if they have to increase my limits for their underwriting, but it still gives me a lower cost, I'm fine with that, right? Is ultimately, as long as the policy protects me to make me whole in the event of a loss and my total cost, cost lowers and is stabilized over time, that's what the focus of this exercise is. The only other piece I had, I know I shared this um, in the last webinar, but I think there is also, um, there could be some opinions of maybe fear of combining into one policy and am I going to get stuck with people who have losses, I don't have losses. And, and I think that that is a, a very fair uh, thought process. But I, what I want to make sure that we all do understand is whether we are buying in bulk as one placement into the market or we're individually buying a insurance policy as a church, we are really, we still are grouped together with other companies, properties, churches, because that is, that is how insurance works, right? Is It is the the group sharing of risk, and then how does the insurance company make money in that process, but still have a fair premium for us? And so whether we buy an individual policy with Church Mutual, we're still grouped with other churches that Church Mutual writes. And unfortunately, the way that they've structured their programs over time, it's led to the fact that they have not been able to sustain a profit. And it's it's really hampered the marketplace. And so our attack into the market as a group buyer of property insurance specifically really is how can we kind of negate some of these market conditions and really buy only what we need to buy based on the spread of risk of all of the churches in the conference. So I did just want to make that point because I think it's easy to Feel like I'm getting grouped into something, but ultimately, no matter how you buy insurance, it is grouping. We're just trying to create a better vehicle to have more purchase power um, to go buy the insurance policies that, that fit our needs. Okay. Uh, again, if you would like a copy of the workbook, uh, please send it to me. Uh, send me an email, wread at txeumc. We will post the video of this webinar on the website. Uh, we will also uh, I'll post the slides as well or send you those. Uh, uh, and um, that way you'll have those. Uh, anything else, Andre, Braxton, Gilbert, that uh, we need to share? Just, uh, just these dates. Um, um... Will, um, expect an email. If you need some assistance, you can reach out to uh, uh, Gilbert Braxton or myself and, uh, and or either you can uh, tune into these webinars that we're going to be hosting. And uh, Andre, and uh, hopefully we can record those as well. Um, uh, sh yes. Uh, I'm going to have to, I'll have to get a little lesson on how to do that if it's going to be if we're going to host it, but if you want to host it, so that you can I'll, record them. I'll, you can record a team's uh, meeting. So uh, yeah. I'll show you how. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, good. Don't worry, Andre. I got your back. <laughs> oh, Gilbert. Gilbert. Gilbert's the generation that knows how to do all these things. Yeah, so yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Okay.
Uh, if there are no other questions, uh, we'll end the webinar and uh, uh, glad you glad you came today. Uh, we had one person come in at the very very last, uh, and I know who that was. And I will reach out to Curtis Mathis uh, individually. So thank you, Curtis, for showing up. So. Well, y'all have a great afternoon, uh, and I responded to several of your emails that I will send you a workbook. I'm going to get to work on that right now, uh, so hopefully you'll expect to see those in the next hour or so. So thank you again. I uh, hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you all. Take care. Bye.